What is going on you guys? It's your girl Diana back at you with another YouTube video. Yesterday episode 6 of Aim to be a Pokemon Master aired in Japan so of course today is going to be my recap and review. And this has been the long anticipated episode that centers around Ash and Pikachu being separated and looking at the same moon. So if you're new here make sure that you subscribe because it helps you girl out and give this video a thumbs up so we can push it out into the YouTube algorithm so that more Pokemon fans can see it. And if you would like another way to support the channel please feel free to check out the merch store. There is a link down below in the description that takes you to not only my merch store but also all of my other socials so you can keep up with what I'm doing on a daily basis. But let's go ahead and hop into episode six. Bye. 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 We open up this episode with the gang just kind of hanging out and relaxing and we see Ash and Pikachu taking a nap when of course to no one's surprise Team Rocket has to come and be annoying and this time they come in a giant Meowth robot and are of course trying to once again capture Pikachu. In order to take out this robot Ash sends out Snivy but Pikachu is still caught in a net at this point and as the robot explodes and sends Team Rocket blasting off again Pikachu and Meowth also go blasting off and actually get separated from the rest of Team Rocket and fall into a river where they are then chased down by a Gyarados. Why did Pikachu not use Thunderbolt? I don't know. I don't ask questions. I just show up. But apparently he learned Waterfall because that's how they managed to escape by literally climbing up a waterfall. Or I guess swimming up a waterfall, but sure anime logic. But they manage to escape the Gyarados and get out of the river where Meowth then proceeds to be a two-faced little cat and pretend to be Pikachu's friend so that he can capture him later on. And of course since they are all separated Ash, Brock, and Misty are actually looking for Pikachu while all of this is happening. But we cut back over to Pikachu and Meowth who have now become hungry after walking around the forest when they just happen to see a tree of orange berries. Some other Pokemon start to actually eat the berries so Meowth has the bright idea to throw a rock at them to get them to go away. But of course the rock misses is the Pokemon he was aiming for and lands on a Spearow. Why is it always a Spearow? These poor Spearows are always getting hit by rocks. But naturally, the Spearow is not happy. So it goes chasing after Pikachu and Meowth. And of course, he's got a call in backup. So once again, they're all being chased down by a flock of Spearow. Honestly, at this point, I just feel kind of bad for the Spearows. They always get the short end of the stick here. They're always getting hit by something. But in order to escape the flock of Spearow, Pikachu and Meowth hop into this little hole that ends up being a cave that goes underground. But the gust from the flock of Spearows managed to knock off Ash's hat that Pikachu was wearing. So of course Pikachu is devastated and they have to find Ash's hat now. Meanwhile, Ash, Brock, and Misty manage to run into the exact same flock of Spearows and of course get chased down by them as well. But while the rest of the gang is now being chased by the same flock of Spearow, we cut back over to Pikachu and Meowth who are now looking for Ash's hat after they manage to climb out of the cave. They then run into a Caterpie who says that it saw where the hat went. And so they're like, say less, lead the way. But they then quickly find out that Caterpie literally moves at a snail's pace. I mean, what do they expect? Look at his little nub legs, come on. So while Pikachu and Meowth are now slowly following Caterpie, we cut back over to Ash, Brock, and Misty, who manage to escape the flock of Spearow, but run into the Spearow that got hit by the rock. Ash tries to help the Spearow because he sees that it's hurt, but of course the Spearow's over here giving all kinds of attitude. So Brock is like, mm, I'm gonna just cover its eyes. Don't worry, I got this. I'll take care of it. I'm a doctor. And uses a potion to heal up the Spearow. And after healing it, the Spearow is actually very grateful and decides to stick around with the gang. However, meanwhile, while they're distracted with the Spearow, we see a Rattata who is trying to steal some cheese out of Ash's bag. We love a nice throwback to when that one Rattata was stealing food out of Ash's bag in the very first anime. I don't know if that was supposed to be like the same thing, but that did happen. But Ash sees the Rattata trying to take the cheese and he's actually like, you know, I was going to save this for me and Pikachu, but like, you look like you need it more than me, bud, because you're over here starving. So he lets Rattata have the cheese. And it looks like Rattata is able to pick up on Pikachu's scent since Pikachu always chills on Ash's shoulder. And Rattata actually climbs up on Ash's shoulder and sits in the exact same spot since it's now grateful as well that Ash was kind enough to give him some food. So it looks like the gang now has two new friends. And and with the Rattata's great sense of smell, they ask for Rattata to help track down Pikachu. And so off they go once again. Cutting back over to Meowth, Pikachu, and Caterpie now, we see that they have not made very much progress. So Meowth gets annoyed and starts carrying Caterpie on his back, but then Meowth gets tired. So Caterpie's like, well, why didn't you say something before? Let me just go ahead and swing us over there like Tarzan. So off they go swinging from branches until they finally get to the tree and see Ash's hat at the very top. Pikachu then starts to climb up the tree to go get Ash's hat, but quickly realizes that it is literally 
literally crawling with venipedes. So he climbs up to the top of the tree without waking up a single one of them, but one of the leaves falls off of the tree and lands on Meowth's nose, which Meowth doesn't even have a nose, so I don't know how that works, but he ends up sneezing and waking up all of the venipede. And so of course, now they're being chased by a bunch of venipedes. And Meowth actually happens to get poisoned by one of them. But as we see Pikachu, Caterpie, and Meowth getting chased down by the venipedes, we actually cut over to a little while later where Ash, Brock, and Misty actually run into the same pack of venipedes and get chased by them as well. It seems that they always just arrive slightly too late in order to catch up with Pikachu and Meowth. But they manage to fare a little better against the venipede since they have Rattata's help as well as Spiro who calls in backup from his flock. And so they manage to get away unscathed and none of them are poisoned. But like I said, the same cannot be said for Meowth, which we then cut back over to Pikachu, Meowth, and Caterpie a little later on in the evening and we see Meowth not looking too good from his poisoning. Pikachu remembers that Ash gave him Petra Berries when he was poisoned one time and that cured him. And there just happened to be a little oddish that popped out of literally nowhere that was like, oh fam, I got you. I know where I can get some Petra berries. And so they manage to find some Petra berries and give one to Meowth, who is then cured of his poisoning. But now that Meowth is healed, we get to the actual emotional part of this episode, which is where Pikachu climbs up on a rock and looks at the full moon while hugging Ash's hat, reminiscing about all the times that he and Ash have had. And Ash actually does the exact same thing from the location that he's at. And we get a nice little montage of all the memories that they've had over all of the anime series. I'm talking from way back in Kanto all the way up until Ash winning the Masters 8 championship. So it was it was nice for a fossil like me to see some of my old favorite episodes be shown. But after our little emotional montage, we cut to the next morning, where we see Pikachu and Ash simultaneously splitting open the exact same berry at the exact same time. Which I don't know if they heard each other open the berry or if it was supposed to be some kind of like, oh, their hearts are connected, so they managed to sense each other's presence somehow. But they managed to somehow figure out that they're close to each other. And so of course they start sprinting towards each other. And eventually they see each other and embrace in a huge hug. But we find out they embrace in a huge hug literally over a cliff. So they literally start falling off of a cliff. And they have like no way of getting out of this one. Except we see the most action that we've seen from good old Latias, who has been camouflaged this entire time and actually saves them from falling off of the cliff. Ash and Pikachu are like, what just happened? How do we literally just start flying because they can't see Latias? But they're like, sure, we'll take it. At least we survived. But after they get saved by Latias, Team Rocket comes in their Meowth balloon and actually saves Meowth as well. And it looks like they've given up on trying to catch Pikachu for this episode because they don't try again and they just fly away in their balloon. And we then end off the episode with Ash and Pikachu reunited and happy to be with each other once again. So my final thoughts on this episode. I actually really enjoyed this episode and I like that it was more centered around Pikachu and Meowth just because I was always a fan of those like little mini movies before like the old Pokemon movies that centered around the Pokemon having their own adventures. So it gave me that same kind of vibe. I also like that they included the little montage when Ash and Pikachu were having their moment looking at the same moon going over all of the memories that they've had across all of the different animes that we've gotten over the past, what, 25 years? It was just something really nice to see and it really showed how much they've actually grown as a duo since we started off in the Kanto anime when Pikachu didn't even like Ash when they first met to quite literally helping him win the championship match to show that he is the best trainer in the world. Like there's been a lot of growth over the years. So it was a nice little reminder of how far they've actually come. I also like that they're having Latios get a little bit more involved in this episode as well since usually we just have like a little pain up at the very end of the episode and we see Latios just kind of hovering there and watching everything from afar. But in this episode, she actually took a huge action and saved them from falling off of the cliff. Granted, she was still in camouflage, so they literally didn't know that it was Latios, but I have a feeling that over the next couple of episodes, she's going to start getting more and more involved. So overall, I'll give this episode an 8 out of 10 simply for the nostalgia factor. But I would love to hear what you guys thought of the latest episode down below in the comments. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this recap and review and thank you to those of you who have joined the channel as members. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I love you all so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.